We had a lot of Czechs working on the film, and one of them was Jan Nemetz, who uh, had been one of the main filmmakers of Prague Spring. And Jan was shooting a movie the morning of the Russian invasion. He had a whole camera crew, and they were going to shoot something, and suddenly, the tanks came roaring in, and Jan got his crew to record all of this stuff. It was the first revolution that was captured on film as it happened uh, with multiple cameras. It was astonishing, and it, it changed the course of events. It happened at 3 o'clock in the morning, and film students, being who they are, all went to the film school, and Frank Daniel, who was the head of the film school then, and later on became the head of Columbia Film School and USC Film School, said, I don't know what's happening, this could be the beginning of World War III, but you're filmmakers, your job is to film it. Use this raw stock, but as soon as you've shot a roll, find somebody, a foreigner or a Czech person who's leaving the country, and get them to smuggle it out of the country, because if it stays here, it's gonna be impounded. Have them published, please. So 18 years later, 1986, I was going around to all these places in Europe saying, do you have any footage from uh, 1968, from the invasion? Oh, yes, we have that. Uh... This is now 1968. This is filmed at the time, and it comes and smashes into a bus, which was being used as a blockade by the Czechs, so the tank was getting rid of a blockade. The great thing about all of this from an editor's point of view is that I had multiple camera coverage. Uh, this event attracted a number of people with cameras. And now we're looking at the same event from another angle. As it turned out, one of the images was at a film library in Stockholm, and another one was from the Canadian Broadcasting Company. So these pieces of film, which had filmed the same event on the same moment in August of 1968, got separated by 3,000 miles and 18 years, and then we found this footage and brought it back together again in the film. We began to see here was this visual footage that could state what divided the two sides of the movie, Prague Spring and the post-Prague Spring. At the end of the process, uh, there was, we had 40, 50 hours of material, which condensed down, I think the first assembly of all of that was 45 minutes. I can remember us being in my trailer where we had a video hookup, putting in the documentary footage that Walter had assembled and then saying, look, here on the storyboard, this is the shot we want right now. And we had three camera crews and we would look at it. We have everything assembled out on the street to try to match another angle of the actual footage. And we would run out and we would shoot stuff that matched the documentary footage exactly. What? Teresa! Teresa, stay there. At the beginning, there is also the question of how do you get into this? You're, you've been in one kind of a world, now you have to go through the looking glass into another kind of visual world. We found uh, somewhere in France at least four of the actual tanks that the Russians used that fit the documentary footage perfectly. And our solution at the beginning was to take an image of a tank going down a street that Sven Nyqvist shot. And as the tank gets closer, it becomes progressively more documentary looking as the color drains out of it and it gains a degree of grain. There's scenes yet that I, that are so beautifully edited that I can't see them. And that drives me crazy because I know they're, they're edited right there. But you get caught up in the emotion of the scene that you forget it. You forget it. You're looking the rest of the scene. Walter was sort of uh, trying to damage the footage and create, you know, layers of negatives and make, you know, the footage match seamlessly with this frayed and decayed footage. But there in the midst of it all are Daniel Day-Lewis and Juliet Binoche and others running around and in the midst of, of the past. We knew we had this shot of the two dead bodies and a flag draping over them. 
And our job was to shoot the reverse of this, which is what this footage here is of Daniel Day-Lewis and Juliette Binoche and the central square in Lyon, which has Russian tanks going back and forth across it. That's where we're looking at Juliette taking pictures. And then when we cut, we're looking at what she's seeing, which are these real dead bodies. You're struck by the actors going through all these things. They're involved, but there's these other things that are real. 